Good afternoon, Ollie Furnival here. Today I'm going to talk to you about the classroom activity, the silent debate. You can see behind me that I've created all these activities I'm going through um, on a document. You can find this document on my um, TESS resources page, Ollie Furnival, or if you'd like to tweet me at ibcoordinator underscore, I can get this to you. So the silent debate, this is um, a really interactive activity, one that is really helpful because it makes sure that all students take part in the debate. Firstly, um, it's very versatile. Debates can be anything. All you're looking for is a statement or a question that can be discussed. So really it applies to every class. I've used this from year seven um, through to um, years 12, the end of the diploma programme. So I've used it at Key Stage 3 and 4 in England and at NYP and DEP in the International Baccalaureate. Um, holding a debate is something I'll be discussing in another video, but really there are a lot of difficulties in holding a debate. And the one that hopefully this difficulty nullifies today is the idea of only a few being involved. So I can stand at the front, ask a question and get the same three or four students, the dominant speakers in the class, but always um, first for the answers. When it could be a quiet student for whatever reason, confidence, um, who has the ideas but doesn't have the confidence on, to share them in the class. So not only are they losing out, but the rest of their peers are losing out because the idea here is that people are going to get a variety of ideas in a very quick time, but also they've got a chance to respond to ideas as they go along. So in a class I did recently, um, it was a, a class where they're just about to start the um, IV um, diploma programme, which is a big jump from the middle years program. So I've just had some questions for the class. Now this can be done anyway, um, it could be done that the, the teacher elicits questions from the class or come prepared. On this occasion I came prepared with my questions. Um, so a big thing about the diploma program is that it's an exam based um, program. So my, one of my first questions for discussion um, in this class was what is the best way to revise for exams? Okay, so it can be there where you get a variety of ideas. Um, or it can be um, a yes-no type answer. Um, for example, one that I did was, which I can't find at the moment, is what um, should you should your subject choices um, depend on whether or not, not you like a teacher? And um, I'll come back to that one um, as we go through. So, um, starting off, um, what is the best way to revise for exams? So here's how we hold the silent debate. The key is that at first it's done in silence. Now that stops, as I said, the more dominant students speaking out. So, what you do is um, you demonstrate it to the class, then you set them off, um, and I'm going to do that now as though I'm very quickly teaching the class. So what I want to do here is I want students to answer this question. So first of all, I'm going to put them into groups of about um, three or four, no more than that really. And what I'm going to ask them to do is different colours, a wiggly line, give an idea, the best way um, to revise for exams. So I might give the example, the best way to revise uh, for exams is to use flashcards. And importantly, I give my reason and I explain on here my reason why. So I'm using this pen for the purpose of the video. In a real classroom situation, you'd have a smaller pen, but colourful, uh, because you want to get a lot of different ideas. Okay, so the idea is that the students in groups of three or four silently, all together, at the same time, are going to be writing different ideas. And it can be written um, upside down, because um, that allows students in a to work circularly around um, the debate, which means that they can all take part at the same time. Now, as they are taking part at the same time, what I want them to do is if someone here has written flashcards, I want another student in another colour, even in the first group activity, could either agree and back up the first point with an example, or they could actually say um, a reason why they disagree, to say no, um, I don't believe um, that flashcards are the best way to um, revise for an exam. So if I just move around here and show you how I've set the classroom up, so what I'd do, is I'd have these um, spread around the room and in groups of three or four, each group would be assigned one of the discussions, okay? And it might be that I give maybe 
I don't know, usually about five minutes, maybe three to five minutes. And what is what happens is around this table, in silence, which is key, I've got now four students um, giving their ideas all at once, which um, is giving me a lot more ideas a lot quicker than if they were sitting in class one by one, putting their hand up, same students answering. Okay, then I will tell the class to stop. And what happens then is this group here who finish this, I might say move clockwise and each group goes clockwise um, around the room. So this group here has finished and I'll say move and silently they then go to this group. Now, by the time they come here, there's hopefully a good few ideas here. When is the best time to do homework? And for the second group, you say to the students, before you start writing, read. The idea there is you don't want students to just simply write ideas that have been written by the previous group. So here, now, I get a chance to read, and I get a chance to either respond to now an anonymous um, student's answer, which takes away the, the peer pressure of correcting someone who you might not want to correct in front of class. Um, so I, I can do that, or I could open a new strand of debate. So again, for five minutes, and then I'll say change, clockwise, and then this group will come to the third one. Um, I've, I've, just as an aside, I've set this one out, uh, a little bit of support here. So what's the most important approach to learning in a diploma program? So in the IB, we have these um, five approaches to learning. So I've, I've written them there to give the students a head start, so they don't have to think, oh, what are the approaches to learning? So by the time we come here, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm now reading, um, let's say two groups, maybe eight students have already had their say, and my, the group comes here, um, eight students have had their say, there might already now be 16, 24 different ideas in a 10 minute spell. Um, now, in the class, I usually have maybe four or five um, different debates going on. So that goes around, and let's say there are five um, groups with five different debates. When they get um, to the fifth one, or the one that they haven't seen, I ask the class to stop. Um, and then, instead of adding and responding, the debate turns from silence into speaking. So what's happened now is that every student has had their say on, on um, all the different um, discussion points. Okay, so hopefully, and what usually happens now is that when I get here, this is what I did in my uh, last class, this is after about um, 15 minutes, um, you can see here, I've got examples here of um, students, there's an idea there, and there's people um, responding to it, so self-management, okay? And you can even see on some of the, the, better, the better ones here, is students um, actually questioning, well, well how do you make the effort? How do you keep your motivation? So they're actually questioning each other. So the group, um, in the, the final group has come to one now that they, haven't, that they haven't seen. And here's the one I couldn't find earlier, which wasn't written. And it says here, my subject choice should depend on the teacher who teaches the subject, okay? So what I'll say to the group who now has this, and they haven't yet looked at it, I'll say you've got five minutes to find what you believe is the best answer for yes and the best answer for no, and they can circle it. And then what happens is they'll choose um, however many you want, um, two speakers if you like. They'll come to the front of the class. Uh, we'll have this on an over, uh, over projector or, or magnets at the front of the class. And then the students here will then talk about and go through some of the ideas, starting with, as I said, the best one for yes and the best one for no. And it's worth noting that they don't know who wrote that. And it might be as a teacher that you want to carry on this discussion. So actually that's really interesting and you might want a secondary debate on it. And then you could ask which student was it who said that and then they could um, explain further if you like. So yeah, it's up to you. You could have one, between one and four people up here presenting. You can, if you like, um, allow them to have added their ideas um, as well. But also I, I think it's, a nice, it's nice that they've got this um, without having seen it and then they've got to make judgments on it. Um, and then um, in, this, in this part of the lesson they're actually talking and discussing. So as you can see here, I've got in a short space of time a wide range of ideas. And as I say, around about 10 minutes I did this earlier and all these ideas. Now some of them may not be of the best quality but that's up to you um, as a teacher if you want to take this further and go on with it. One way I do that is if I'm doing this as a revision activity um, in a lesson, then what I might do 
is when we've agreed the best ones, I might have just, just check that they all make sense. We've got a lot of ideas here. And then what I could easily do is scan those and um, email them onto the class website, or I could um, photocopy them and give them as a revision pack to students. Um, students, when they're revising, if they like, and, and you've got used to doing this in class, they could do it themselves and create their own uh, revision packs. So, um, overall, this, you know, this, this is quite comfortable into a 50 minute uh, to a one hour lesson. So, what's happened is we've gone from a question at the start, but we've made sure that students, quietly, to stop the dominating speakers, have gone, gone around and they've given ideas of their own and they've actually agreed to back up people or they've disagreed um, and said, added new ideas and said why they don't. Um, which is really important for them to be able to do depending on, on, on the subject. Everyone can have a say, everyone gets a chance to respond to the views of others. Hopefully it builds confidence with students because their ideas are being listened to um, and responded, um, responses have been given, especially if their ideas are picked out um, at the front. Um, you as a teacher um, can go around prompting, can go around questioning as, 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 um, as they go around the first part of the activity um, in silence. You as a teacher can also then look at uh, the presentation skills of the students. Another good thing as a teacher at the end, when you've got a student there, you can um, add your ideas to um, further the argument or maybe correct slight mistakes or um, really um, add secondary um, questions to it. Okay? So yeah, this is called a silent debate um, and as I said at the start of the video, I believe it's useful for a variety of subjects, all subjects really, uh, that, that you're looking at um, discussion topics in and this can be done um, at the beginning of a debate class, it could be done as a revision activity. These questions could be questions that come up on the exam, um, which is another way of doing it, of just getting different ideas. And there, you know, exam questions are asking you to evaluate, to analyse. Right, that's the video. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.